Tally! Tally! I know I just saw you back on the planet, but for some reason you didn't want to talk to me while I just got the Geth file, so I'm gonna hunt you down right now and talk to you. I wish we could get our squad in this elevator just to hear them talk a little bit. But no, it's only the elevators back on the Citadel. Tally! Shepard, I need to talk to you. It's important. You should have talked to me earlier. <laughs> Is something wrong? You know the data you took from those Geth control nodes? The information you uploaded to Alliance Control? I want a copy of it. You want to bring this data back to the migrant fleet? Those files have information that could be vital to our efforts to understand the Geth. It could be the key to helping us reclaim our homeworld. I'm actually wondering about how this would work though, because Tali is not an Alliance member, and technically, we retrieve that information as a part of the Alliance military, so is there some bureaucratic stuff that'll clash in there? Uh... If I give you this data, your pilgrimage is over. You'll go back to your own people. Not right away. I'll stay with you as long as it takes to stop Seren. But my people need this. It'll take years to decipher and analyze the data. Maybe even decades, but it's worth the time. This information will give us new insight into how the Geth have changed and evolved over the past centuries. Well, I'm the Spectre. I can do whatever I want. Go ahead. Make a copy. My people, I owe you a great debt. One I can never repay. The only thing I can offer in return is what you already have. My solemn promise to stay with you until Saren and his Geth armies are defeated. Honestly speaking though, is Tali gonna be that important in our fight? She's a Quarian and she's got some very specific Quarian knowledge, especially against the Geth. But like, in terms of actual combat and stuff, is she that important? <laughs> I never wanted anything more. Thank you, Shepard. Okay. Wait, is that like an actual quest, or are you done? That's it? We're not going anywhere? Okay, well, I mean, that's that's fine too. Maybe we'll learn more about the Quarians right now. Quarian economy. The migrant fleet has little economic base, operating in a state of perpetual hand-to-mouth. Hand-to-mouth? While Quarian ships include light man manufacturing and assembly plants, they lack heavy industries such as refining and shipbuilding. The fleet has tankers for water purification and oxygen cracking, but the space-intensive nature of agriculture limits food production. A single disaster could destroy the fragile balance. The Quarians earn income in creative ways. Because the government is obliged to provide food, water, air, and medical support for every individual, the Conclave strategically determines the course of the fleet to bring in resources and income. A species who suspects the migrant fleet is heading towards their space often offers a gift of surplus starships, fuel, and resources to convince the Conclave to alter a course. As the fleet passes through a system, swarms of mining vessels work over asteroids where metals and siliceous materials and cometary bodies for water, ice, and organics. Corian miners are adept at locating and strip mining spaceborne resources. This sparks conflict with corporations already working with the system. Large mining concerns spend millions on lobbyists and public relations, portraying the Quarians as locusts, devouring the resources of a system before moving on. The greatest asset of the Quarians is their rarefied skills. Most are experienced miners. Due to their life of perpetual salvage and repair, they are skilled engineers and technicians. More than once, the very corporations that lobby against the Quarians have made backroom deals with the fleet, arranging for skilled Quarians to fill space engineering jobs that other species would demand higher wages for. Quarians are widely hated among the working classes. The Quarians are coming to take our jobs, is a common response to the fleet's approach. <laughs> wow. They do their job better than you, and they work for a lower wage. Guys, you're being taken advantage of! No. The Migrant Fleet The Migrant Fleet is the largest concentration of star-faring vessels in the galaxy, sprawling across millions of kilometers. It can take days for the entire fleet to pass through a mass relay. When the Quarians fled their homeworld, the fleet was a motley aggregation of freighters, shuttles, industrial vessels, and the odd warship. After three centuries, all have been modified to support larger crews as comfortably as possible. 
As the Quarians achieved stability, they began weeding out the ships at least suitable for long-term habitation, selling them and pooling the money to buy larger and more space-worthy hulls. This process is ongoing, as vessels wear out and break down. Kind of unlike Earth people where we have a home, you know, all humans have a home in Earth, but the Quarians don't really have a home world anymore. While ships enjoy dedicated cabins with full privacy and sanitary facilities, many more are former freighters, whose cargo bays and containers are pressurized and divided into family spaces using simple metal cubicle bulkheads. The Quarians enliven these austere spaces with colorful quilts and tapestries, which also help muffle sound. The day-to-day -day operations of the fleet, traffic control, station keeping, supply distribution, and so on, are under military jurisdiction. Though ship captains have the authority to deviate from their assigned positions and may leave the fleet at any time, they are assumed to do so at their own risk. As a migrant fleet moves around the galaxy, many ships split off to pursue individual goals, returning days or years later. Pretty family-oriented, group-oriented, unlike the Krogan, which are kind of like spread everywhere now because what else can they do? Hmm, that sort of thing is probably rooted in stuff like for example, how easily you can have a baby, yeah? Quarians. Right now, we only know that Asari can have babies with, like, anybody, but the other races? How much... How many... How many... Uh, how much intermingling can we have going on here? I don't know. <laughs> the government. Due to the Quarians' precarious existence and the need to enforce strict rationing, the government is somewhat autocratic. The migrant fleet's operations are directed by the Admiralty, a board of five military officers who are advised by a legislative body called the Conclave. Each vessel in the fleet has a right to send representatives to the Conclave aboard the flagship. The number of representatives is based on the crew size. Larger clans with bigger ships and more votes form the cores of political blocs. Opposition comes from the Outriders' coalition, with delegates from thousands of smaller ships. The Admiralty defers to the Conclave's decisions in most circumstances. However, if all five members agree that a Conclave decision jeopardizes the survival of the fleet and cannot get the Conclave to address their concerns, they have the right to summarily overturn the legislative decision. After the Admiralty uses this extraordinary power, they must resign. If the Admiralty does not step down after using their veto, the rest of the military is obliged to arrest them. That's a pretty good system. They can't abuse this power because if they do, they'll, they'll be out of here. Each ship captain has authority over his vessel, but is advised by an elected civilian council, just as the Admiralty is advised by the Conclave. This relationship may range from cooperation to polite tolerance to outright hostility, but any captain who overrules his council without good reason is relieved of command by the Admiralty. Many Quarian ships are owned by clans who pool their resources to purchase used vessels from private sellers. Large ships are prestigious for big, rich clans, but a small ship means status for a small clan with enough personal wealth to afford a private vessel. Clan vessel captains are not subject to dismissal by the Admiralty. Abusive captains are a family problem if they don't disrupt the operations of the fleet. Everything is about the fleet, but if you don't disturb them, it's okay. Okay, we are gonna go... Let's go back to the Citadel and... Um... Something I can do for you, Commander. Carry on, Adams. I think aye, aye, probably what I'm gonna do is just walk around the Citadel and see if we can find something happening. Maybe we'll run into the fan again. Just walk around, take some elevators, chill out, talk to Udina, who is probably upset with me like he always is. When is he never upset? Why does that elevator not go to the top? This is so... It's kind of inefficient, isn't it? <laughs> okay, guys, let's go back home. Message from Admiral Hackett, Commander. Patching it through. Never mind. We just received your report. Looks like this Geth incursion was bigger than we thought. They were probably preparing for a major offensive in the system. We're increasing patrols in the Armstrong cluster to make sure they can't establish another foothold in the region. Nice job, Shepard. You saved a lot of human lives on this mission. Hack it out. Yeah, but what about the Turin Insignias? You didn't congratulate me for that. Come on! Just one word, one word acknowledging the trouble I went through to do that, please. <laughs> Citadel. Citadel. Yeah. 
here we are. Has the traffic control gone any better while I was gone? Does anybody else want another interview? I don't know, we'll have to see. More importantly, who should I bring with me? Hmm... I don't know. Let's see here. Well, last time we brought Liara and... Kaden. Big place. Yeah, I remember you. This time, let's do... maybe... Rex and Tali. Tali has the electronic skill now, so maybe she can do that one decryption thing I was missing in the CSEC Academy. Equalizing interior pressure with exterior atmosphere. Logged. The commanding officer is ashore. Exo Presley has the deck. Nobody waiting for me this time? Okay. After years of poor economic performance, Exogeny has announced that its research colony on Pharos is finally returning a profit. What? New discoveries and a dedicated colonization effort have finally paid off for Exogeny. Exogeny's stock rose sharply with the announcement, with investors pleased at this surprising news. Why would that be the case? We just destroyed their colony. This must be outdated. Or at least I hope it is. Okay! That one decryption thingy, I believe, was over here. It's peaceful here now. No? Was it not this one? Hold on. Oh my gosh, Tali looks so weird in red. I'm not used to it. Oh, <gasps> did they take it away from me? I'm pretty sure it was this room, right? Oh my god, no! Chalik! What happened to that one thing? Did you decrypt it? Good to see you, Commander. Okay. Well, I guess I'm just gonna have a walk around here, see if anybody wants to talk, and uh, we'll see where we go. Hello, Commander. Hello, soldier. Alliance officials report that a Geth incursion into the Armstrong Cluster has been repulsed, with the Geth suffering heavy casualties. In the event of future Geth activity, the Alliance plans to maintain a strong security presence in the area. That's pretty up-to-date information. Oh dear, why is Udina back here? What now? I saw your Ferris report. If we had known anything about the Thorian, Exogeny would never have been given the permits to start a colony there. Thank God the colony survived. We can't afford to have too many failures out in the Traverse. It's one of our major expansion regions. Is Exogeny a human company? Oh my god. You don't give a damn about the colonists. It's all just politics to you, isn't it? We can't all be the hero who charges in to save the day, Commander. But we each serve humanity in our own way. You can't escape interstellar politics, it's part of the big picture, and sometimes it isn't pretty. I agree. Just ignore him, Shepard. The Ambassador's a little bitter sometimes, comes with the job. It's okay, I understand. Like, he... Somebody has to be the bad guy. It's not gonna be me, but... Udina has to pick up after my mess all the time, so... That is how he's going to be like. Yes, Commander? How are you holding up? Oh, no, 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 yeah. Honored, yeah. but you're the one who can stop, Sarah. Not this again. I believe in you, Shepard. Mm. If that means I have to step aside, so be it. Where can I find Admiral Kahoku? Last I heard, he was up in the tower trying to get the Council to investigate Bane's death. Is there anything else, Commander? No, he's not there. I swear he's not. But it might be good to get a refresher on what Novaria and Vermeer are going to be about. Vermeer in particular, I'm pretty sure we haven't asked about yet. What can you tell me about Novaria? Novaria's trouble. Always has been. The whole planet's basically a center for corporations to conduct illegal research. Watch your back there, Shepard. Spectres are about the only form of citadel authority Novaria respects. But they aren't popular. We'll see. Do you know anything about Vermeer? Sorry, Shepard. I've never even heard of it before all this. 
You'll have to go out there and check it out for yourself. Not surprised. The galaxy is big. I should go. I'll be here if you need anything. What's with the helmets, Tally? Are all quarians shy? Or do you not believe in letting outsiders see your faces? No, living in the clean environment of the flotilla has weakened our immune systems. The environmental suits protect against diseases. Naturally. Anything that isn't constantly challenged grows weak. Everyone has such differing viewpoints here. Alliance officials have raided a dangerous cult controlled by a former Alliance officer, Major Kyle. Major Kyle surrendered and is now being treated for severe post-traumatic stress disorder. That's good to hear, I guess. What about the rest of the people? The biotic people? Speaking of which, I kind of want an update on the biotic people that were kidnapping the CEO too. What do you say we head down to Cora's den after shift? Sounds good. Some of the others are going for Novio's farewell thing. Damn, I forgot that was today. Where's he going again? Novaria. Apparently, they've got a huge demand for corporate security. Hmm. Novaria? Isn't that the frozen planet? Yeah, ugh, I wouldn't go, but I guess the pay's pretty good. Huh. Maybe we should bring Garrus and Liara. One researcher, one security, former security person. Okay, I've been wandering around and I don't see anything particularly new, but we haven't been back to the places like Flux and Cora's Den for a while. Presidium technicians are struggling to understand why a computer system catastrophically overloaded recently. Whoops. Technicians are reportedly unsure of what caused the malfunction or even what the system was originally designed to do. CSEC is investigating the possible vandalism or misuse of public property. That VI should have come work for me. We could have been rich together, but no, they were all like... What on earth was that? Nothing special? Okay. Oh. Whoa! You okay, dude? He got kicked out. Shells. We are at the entrance of Flux right now. Yeah, what is it? Why were you tossed out of there? Doran didn't have a clue what I was doing. He, he assumed I was cheating. And yet here you are, cheater. I was just tipping the scales in my favor. Only as an experiment. <laughs> These damn Solarians. Just like Shorbin. Still sounds like cheating to me. To you, maybe. But this device is merely intended to simulate situations and record results. Recording losses is easy, of course. Nobody notices those. Why do you need to record these outcomes? Ah, now you're getting to the heart of it. I've spent the last five years developing a system that can accurately predict wins and losses on the Quasar. I just need a few more recorded wins and I can complete the algorithms. Really? Tell me more. Can you do that? Isn't that illegal? It's illegal to use my system, but I won't use it. I'll sell it to others. I just need a few more wins recorded. Kind of like torrenting? The technology itself is not illegal? Does the device help me win? <laughs> the device is set to emit a frequency that will slightly increase your odds. Hmm. Nothing like my system eventually will, but enough to allow you to record your wins more quickly. Why don't you just sell the device then? What? No. This device is archaic. It uses brute force to achieve its goal. Besides, you saw how easily it was detected. My system, when it's complete, will be far more efficient and completely undetectable. Does the device help Wait, 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 the order changed. The device is set to- Nothing like my system eventually will, but enough to allow you to record your wins more quickly. Does the device help me win? Wait, what? The device is set to emit a frequency that will slightly increase your odds. Nothing like my system eventually will, but enough to allow you to record your wins more quickly. Is it just me, or do both of them give the same thing? Hold on. What's in this for me? Here we go. Keep your winnings. That should be payment enough, I think. Hmm. 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 I'll help you out. Huh. I suppose I could let you try it. Here you go. 
When you've recorded enough wins, it'll let you know. Of course, if you get caught with the device, well, you saw what happened to me. Well, off you go. That data won't collect itself. Okay, I was just thinking I needed an excuse to play the gambling machine again it's anyway. And what did you hear exactly? More rumors about strange metal creatures with real AI, no doubt. Geth? Yes, but there's more. Yeah, there always is. I heard they had some connection with a rogue Spectre. <gasps> Not this again. Why is that so hard to believe? Whatever you say, just don't expect us to believe it too. News traveling surprisingly fast. Rita, I never came back for you. About Jenna. Hey, Jenna came back looking for work. Thanks for getting her out of Cora's den. I was glad to help out. Yeah, everyone seems real happy to have her back. And yet, you seem less than pleased. I'm glad she's out of the den. I'd just forgotten what it was like to have her around. <laughs> I haven't had a decent tip since she got back. Oh, where is she? Is she around here? Commander, thanks again for all your help. Huh. Places like this always want to hire Krogan bouncers. It's like we're a status symbol for them. They don't have one here, though. Hey, good to see another human in here. This music is interesting. I wonder if I can find a copy to bring back to the flotilla. I wouldn't recommend that. You might get a copyright strike. I'm waiting for someone else. Does this guy actually do anything, or is he just here? Oh, hey, Jenna. Hey there, welcome to Flex. You're just gonna pretend I don't know you? I'll be right over. Uh, take a seat, someone will be with you soon. Okay, fine. Well, we want to test out the machine. Dorn. Oh, you were the guy that kicked the Quarian, not the Quarian, the Solarian out. Hello again. Can I help you? Oh, absolutely not. Absolutely not. This was the bartender guy. He's just standing in a different spot. Just passing through. Enjoy your time here at Flux. Okay, don't do it right in front of him then. Do it like over here. But it's only the high stakes machine here. I want to try it on a low stakes machine first. Uh, hopefully he's not looking that hard. Okay. I think we can spare maybe just 20 credits. We're a little bit richer than when we first came here, so... Should be okay. What am I trying to get? 21? 21? Oh, 20! Mmm! Well... There you go. How many times do you want me to play? A quirky Solarian named Shells was thrown out for cheating, but he wasn't actually cheating. Scan the machines. Oh, use the machines at least five times. Don't get caught. Are you saying don't get caught for real or can I actually get caught? Yeah, let's try the high stakes one. We are rich these days. The rules are the same, right? 20? One. 20. 20. Okay, 19 pays out as well. Okay, sure. Don't often see someone getting as lucky as you. Ah. Uh, is that guy onto me? still standing there. I'll use a different machine. Use a different machine. Am I getting... Wait. Why am I getting money even though it's not... What are the rules again? Okay, so I do get payouts for 19. Yeah, 20 is the maximum though. Okay. You know what's crazy though? I don't think I've lost a single round of this. Ever. Like, even including the one back when we first came to the Citadel? Ah, there's a chance we'll bust, but let's go. Oh my freaking god. Um, how do I get caught though? Like, what? what? I'm scared of- Okay, obviously I'm not gonna play right here. That's a bit- <laughs> Maybe I'll 
not go back to the low stakes. If it's low stakes, he's losing less money, so he won't care as much. Am I actually this lucky, or is it the machine? The machine is recording though, right? It's not really changing the odds, is it? Come on, come on. Maybe it's more believable if we lose once in a while. Your luck seems unnatural, human. Dude, it's 40 credits, okay? Don't don't get mad at me for 40 credits. <laughs> Just one more, once more. Once more. This is for research, okay? I've got like a million credits on me. Don't don't get mad about 40 credits. And it's not really 40 because I spent 20 playing, so you're only losing 20 credits here. Just look the other way. I use the same machine this time. I don't know if that actually matters. Okay, just pay out, pay out, whatever. No! Okay, go, go! <laughs> this is for science, okay? I'm not here to steal your money. Can I dance? Why can't I dance? I wanna dance! Okay. Whew, whew. Living life on the edge, Rogue Spectre. It's me, I'm the Rogue Spectre. So, did you record five wounds with the device yet? Here you go. I hope it's what you're looking for. Excellent indeed. This will provide me with invaluable data. You enjoy those winnings. I'm gonna get the system completed. <laughs> okay. I got like, what? A thousand credits out of that? Probably less, right? Well, uh, this might mean we can never come back to the Flux again. Cause that guy may notice later and maybe he'll get mad at me. I don't want to find out, so we're never coming back. <laughs> Another place I haven't been back to at all is the Korra's Den, so let's check that out. So far, I'm not seeing the fan around here, and we saw him here last time, so he probably... Is he still here? Oh, sure. I can return that for you. Thanks. Hasn't worked well since I bought it. Hey! Are you refunding his stuff? Ah! Here you go. Your account will be credited. You did! You took his return! Look, I'm telling you, I bought this here. Why won't you return it? I can't take it back unless... I know, I know. Unless I have a proof of purchase. I thought we were going to throw out the R word here just now. Because you funded it for the Turian. Uh, Commander, I've been waiting for you to get back. Oh, you really did want me to come back here. I've got an idea and I wanted to run it by you. What's on your mind? With so many human colonies being attacked, I'm not sure that one Spectre is enough. What if you signed me on as another Spectre? I don't get to make that decision, man. I'm sorry. E Conrad, I don't think that's a good idea. But I'd make a great Spectre. I'd be right there with you, showing the Council what humanity is capable of. I know you're afraid to trust people after losing your team at Akuz, <laughs> but I'd never let you down. No, you have to defend people back on the Citadel. There's a lot of civilians here, too. What about your wife, Conrad? She trusts you, too. Aren't you letting her down? What? I, I don't understand. You already let her down by putting a poster of me up in your home. You know what keeps me going out here? Knowing that people back home are keeping humanity strong. You... You're right. I just got so caught up in all of it, I wanted to help. I'll go home. Thanks for <laughs> setting me straight. Well, we probably did a good thing. <laughs> Even if I wanted to, though, I'm pretty sure that's not how Spectres are appointed. If that's how it happened, we would have 20 Spectres by now already. But instead, it took us like 20 years to even get one Spectre. Yes, human. You need something, yes? More than 20 years, Goodbye. actually. Yes, all right then. Good tidings to you, human. We're still trying to gain on our position here, trying to get a seat on the council and all. Finch, who the hell are you? They told me it was you, but I didn't believe it. Shepard grew up and turned into a soldier. Have we met? Name's Finch. You probably don't remember me, but we ran together in the 10th Street Reds. Maybe you don't remember it yourself, running in a gang. None of the vids Whoa. mention it when they're talking about you. 
before I was even involved with a coups. Ooh. Well, everybody has a past. My history's a matter of public record. I got nothing to hide. Really? What if someone gave an interview talking about Commander Shepard's history in the gangs? We're not trying to cause you trouble, Shepard. We just want a favor, for old time's sake. One of the Reds, Kurt Wiseman, got picked up by Turians. We'd like you to talk to the Turian guard in the bar and get Kurt out. What was this guy arrested for? Some stupid minor offense. Maybe he had a little red sand. You know how the Turians are. They declared him a problem, and they're shipping him back for a trial. Red sand. You're not asking me to break Wiseman out of jail, are you? Of course not. But word has it you've got some pull with the aliens. All we're asking you to do is pull a little for us. Does this guy know I'm a Spectre? It doesn't sound like it. What was one of the 10th Street Reds doing in Turian space? Since your days, the Reds have expanded. We do some salvage, a little shipping here and there, that kind of thing. Mmm, I mean, I, I feel like if you're asking me do I want to help some shady people, the answer is no. But for the sake of doing every quest, I want to do it anyway. It's a little bit shady, and I don't like that this guy is basically blackmailing me. I mean, we've done shadier things, but out of my own volition. This guy's blackmailing me into doing something shady. I'll try. I'll talk to the Turian and see what I can do. Thanks, Shepard. I knew you'd remember your old friends. The guard's over in Korra's den. Take care of this, and you'll never see me again. Okay. Old friends, huh? A gang from my youth. I'm an orphan. It's not that surprising that I grew up in a gang. Everybody needs a place to belong to. If anything, it's amazing that I started out in a gang, and now I'm a specter, the first one for humanity. Just had a good thing going here. Too bad he got greedy. Yeah. I could get used to living like this. <laughs> Talia is so excited. Here he is. Can I help you? A human named Finch wanted me to use my authority oh, as a God. to free Kurt Wiseman. The xenophobe? I should have known he'd have friends. Thank you for the information. Oh, God! We'll increase the guard on his cell. I knew you'd rat us <laughs> out, Shepard. Now it's payback time. When we're through telling our story, the aliens will all know what the first human specter really is. That actually was not my intention. I thought he was- I thought that I've got a warning was, Hey Turian guard, I'm gonna warn you, you better do this for me, or else. Not, hey, I'm gonna rat Finch out. <laughs> okay, we are gonna roll with it. My bio is public record. Everyone knows I ran with gangs as a kid. They don't know that the Reds target aliens specifically. We've got the backers to handle off-world missions. Your alien friends won't like you so much when they hear what your gang did. <laughs> it doesn't matter, because I'm a Spectre. What do you want, Finch? What gets you out of my life? What do I want? I want aliens off of Earth. I want the Council to stay out of humanity's business. Actually, I'm kind of curious. We're here in the Citadel now, but what's happening back on Earth? Is it like really multicultural and multiracial? Are there like aliens there? Sounds like it. The 10th Street Reds was a gang, not an Earth First movement. They're a human movement now. You think the vids will make that distinction? I can find a dozen Reds who'll swear they saw you kill aliens for fun. Who's going to believe you then? Uh, I do kill aliens for fun. Check out the Deer Guru. If you want humanity to be strong, a smear attack on the first human Spectre is a bad idea. The Spectre is right. This is humanity's chance to prove itself. There's even talk of earning a council seat. Of course you'd side with Shepard. You want someone who's in bed with your kind. 
We need the other races, Finch. That's the best way to strengthen humanity. Fine, Shepard, you're right. You're not one of the Reds. Maybe you never were. That man is a xenophobe who thinks he can blackmail a Spectre. You should have killed him. In a club? Just bring out a gun and shoot him? I don't think so. I didn't need target practice. Don't you have a prisoner to guard? Goodbye, human. It'll be interesting to see what kind of Spectre you turn out to be. I love the Turians' little hats. It's so comical. Celebratory dance. Let's have a look here. And relax. We're right here anyway. Oh god, her, her gaze is so fierce. I don't feel relaxed at all. <laughs> Wait, so the Turian facial markings are like... We read about this in the Codex, right? They're not like tattoos, but then what about for the Asari then? Is it kind of like a tribal thing too? Who knows? Okay, thank you very much. That was a... that was a fun time. Whoa, this person has two ladies here! Big player! I got business here, but not with you. Not now. Watch the <laughs> show. Alright, guys. Go away. Let me... let me drink it. Okay, there were stuff here in the flux and in the club. Damn man, Finch, if I didn't pick wrong, I really was gonna help you get the guy released, but... I guess it wasn't just a gang, it was some xenophobe gang, so it probably... was a good idea that I didn't do anything for them anyway. Okay... Moreland shop. I think we can probably go back now. Probably? I believe so. Why don't we read a little bit about the rest of the Quarians? I also got some codex entries walking around, examining stuff earlier. Quarians, law and defense. Although the Conclave establishes civil law as much as any planet-based democracy, enforcement and trials are more unique. After the flight from the Geth, there were few constables to police the millions of civilians aboard the fleet, so the Navy parceled out marine squads to maintain order and enforce the law. Today, Quarian Marines have evolved training and tactics akin to civilian police, but remain adept at combat in the confined spaces of a starship and fully under the command of the military. Once taken into custody, the accused is brought before the ship's captain for judgment. While the ship's council may make recommendations, tradition holds that the captain has absolute authority in matters of discipline. Most are lenient, assigning additional or more odious maintenance tasks aboard the ship. Persistent Residifists are accidentally left on the next habitable world. This practice of abandoning criminals on other people's planets is a point of friction between the Quarians and the systems they pass through. Captains rarely have another choice. With space and resources at a premium, supporting a non-productive person population is not an option. Okay, so that kind of answers my question before. What happens to old Quarians? What happens to, like, weak Quarians? Non-productive. But maybe that's only for the prison population. In the early years, many Quarian freighters were armed and used as irregular privateers. Civilian ships still show a strong preference for armament, making them unpopular targets for pirates. Though they have rebuilt their military, there are still mere hundreds of warships to protect tens of thousands of ships. The Quarian Navy follows strict routines of patrol and take no chances. If the intent of an approaching ship can't be ascertained, they shoot to kill. The Quarians have it really hard with all the migrating and just never really staying still in one place. Pilgrimage. When Quarians of the migrant fleet reach young adulthood, they must leave their birth ship and find a new crew to accept them as permanent residents. To prove themselves, they must recover something of value. This is offered to their prospective captain as proof they will not be a mere burden on the shoestring resources of the ship. The process is called a pilgrimage. Stripped of ritual, the pilgrimage is an attempt to maintain genetic diversity within the small, relatively isolated population bases that make up the migrant fleet. If the young stayed and married within their birth vessel, the risk of inbreeding would increase sharply. Wow, they're thinking ahead. Quarians are surgically fitted with their various immunity-boosting implants in preparation for leaving on pilgrimage. Having grown up within the sterile, controlled environments of the migrant fleet ships, Quarians have virtually no natural immune system. Have they ever thought of, like, not doing that then? Like, not adding these implants, at least at birth, to build up some immune system? Religion. 
The ancient Koreans practiced ancestor worship. Even after abandoning faith for secularism, Koreans continue to revere the wisdom of elders. As time passed and technology advanced, they inevitably turned their knowledge into preserving the personalities and memories of the elderly as computer virtual intelligences BI. These recordings became a repository of knowledge and wisdom stored in a central data bank and available through any extranet connection. They held no illusions that this was a form of immortality. The Gaul VIs, their electronically preserved ancestors, were not truly sapient. This was considered a surmountable problem. Sapiens could surely be reduced to simple mathematics. Can it? Koreans began exhaustive research into creating artificial intelligence so they could learn to escape the bounds of mortality and give their ancestral records true awareness. Unfortunately, the life the Koreans created did not accept the same truths as they did. The Geth destroyed the ancestor databanks when they took over. Oh wow, that's, that's awful, oh my god. In the centuries since they evacuated their homeworld, most Koreans have returned to religion in various forms. Many believe that the rise of the Geth and the destruction of their ancestors were chastisement for arrogantly forsaking the old ways and venerating self-made idols. Others have a more philosophical outlook, believing their race was indeed arrogant, but no supernatural agency lay beyond the Geth revolt. Rather, the Koreans' action wrought their own doom. Either way, every Korean would agree that their own hubris cost them their homeworld. Whoa, the Geth destroying the Koreans' ancestors. That's pretty hardcore. But at the same time, the Koreans trying to like basically make a chatbot, an immortal chatbot out of everyone who died in an attempt to grasp onto immortality. Maybe that is a little bit arrogant. But it feels like they might have been getting a bit close to it though because just look at the Geth right now. They're evolving. More and more, more and more, to the point that they freaking took over the home world. It's not the outcome the Koreans wanted, but technologically, it's an impressive outcome. How can you fight your own people, Rex? There aren't that many of you left. Anyone who fights us is either stupid or on Saren's payroll. Killing the latter is business. Killing the former is a favor to the universe. What about stupid Krogans, though? There aren't that many Krogans around. You still want to kill everybody? Okay, I think we are done with the Citadel yet again. And we are ready to head back. Reporter Kalisa Algilani recently attempted to land an interview with Commander Shepard, the first human specter. Commander Shepard answered difficult questions, demonstrating that under that military uniform is a keen diplomatic mind. We'll have exclusive footage later today. She ambushed me. Don't talk to the media vultures. In a further development in the Eden Prime investigation, the Council has reportedly revoked the specter status of one of its operatives. While the unnamed operative Aww. has not yet been apprehended, a council spokesman confirmed that corrective actions had been taken. Oh, so that part is sort of public knowledge now. About Saren? I'm not sure if the Geth are, though. <laughs> it's interesting, these elevators. I'm gonna go through all of them. Rex, forgive the impertinence, but you are not like the Krogan described in the stories on the flotilla. When you're young, you go looking for every fight you can. You get older. You realize the best fights will find you. Rex is so old and cynical. Who is the oldest person on our ship, I wonder? Alright guys, did you have fun in the Citadel? Time to go back to our real home. Our makeshift home.